passage is Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. This passage gives me a sense of calm every time I read it. I find comfort knowing that God knows exactly what is in store for me, even when I have no idea what lies ahead. And this Bible verse conveys that message perfectly. I will never know the exact way my life is headed or what new challenges will come up. But when I see this passage, I can remember that God will always have a plan and it will be the right one for me. He will never falter and he will always have a way for, to protect me from what is truly harmful. And even if I don't like that way or understand it at the time. Every day produces new hardships. And though I have to face many of them on my own, I can know that I will always have God and he will always be watching over me. Out there will always be the times that it seems as though the whole world is conspiring against me, the times when I have no idea which way to go, and the times when I just want to give up. But I have to live in faith, no matter what, God will provide for me. Jeremiah 29 11 reminds me that all I need is faith in my Lord God to get me through my struggles. Recently I have gone through some things that have caused my life to change in an unexpected way. I have been a competitive gymnast for almost as long as I have lived in Colorado, and I recently got injured. This injury has made it impossible to return to competition-level gymnastics. When I first got injured, I was upset, and all I could think was that it wasn't fair. I thought this injury had derailed my future. Though I'm no longer going down the path that I had once envisioned for myself, I now see God has a different plan for my future than I did. This is just one of the examples of many unexpected changes I will face in the next years of my life. Even though they might seem like a huge hindrance at the time, I can be comforted in the knowledge that there will be a plan for me. Whenever I read or see Jeremiah 29:11, I am reminded of the fact that no matter the bumps in the road, God is sending me down the best path for me. Whenever I'm facing something new and difficult, I can read this verse and find peace. passage Psalm 19 119 105 your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path inspires me this passage inspires me because if I were to fall away the light is always there when I fail God will pick me up and show me the path God's word is a path in of itself leading us to him God never said life was going to be easy there are hardships and suffering but we can always look to him for guidance we can never be perfect no one can that's why Jesus died to save us from our sins to be reunited, reunited with God in heaven. There are many evils in this world. As believers, we must stay strong. People will try to tear us down and make us doubt. What we can do is try to bring them into faith, bring them to the light, the path. Romans 6, 9 through 10. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. This verse assures us that Jesus Christ is arisen and has ascended into heaven. In this verse, Paul reveals us that Jesus is to be our example. We should be very glad that he's come down, sacrificed himself, and that he now lives up in heaven with God. Now, to know what this gift really is, we have to analyze the verse. Romans 6, 9 reads, For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. He can't die again for sin, is what this means. He saved us all on that cross. He proclaimed his mastery over death on that cross. So we know that as he rose, we, we're all saved. The next part, Romans 6, 10, says, says the death he died he died to sin once for all but the life he lives he lives to god this is assurance of god's great promise that he died for us to be saved but for that victory to come it had to be with great sacrifice he he gave his son imagine giving up one of your sons or daughters to die so that you and all your fellow believers may be saved can i touch your heart that he would give away Jesus into this world to be
be mistreated, tormented, and killed by the people. Some may even be believers, some of those rowings there. But we all know that it was, it was what was necessary to save us all. Now, it says that that sin put a great burden on him, greater than any of us could have ever imagined. He hung from that cross with all those sins on his back, pulling him down, just weighing him down until eventually he breathed his last. And all those sins were gone with him. It reminds us of how amazing God is and Jesus is, that he would come down and die for us. I want to take a moment to reflect on death. Death, death isn't just, death, when we think about it, is that chilling feeling just makes our skin just tremble thinking about it. And sometimes we even outright deny it. That's, that's not because we're, that's because we're sinful, but we're all human. It's not like a Muslim thing, a Jewish thing, a Hindu thing. It's a human thing. We all fear death. But knowing that Jesus died, imagine how he felt. He was also human. Imagine how he felt when he knew that he was to die. It's just amazing that he didn't just outright deny it. He went through with it. He welcomed death with open hands. And it's just amazing the courage he put up to save us. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to all of us, really. As Christians, one in God, dead in sin, but alive in Christ.